heard you speaking about that with Andrew Huberman, where you referred to yourself or he referred to you as that late night DJ voice. And I right. thought, what a perfect description. It's a calming voice. And right. I often notice it's the first thing to go. Like if I'm in a difficult conversation or an emotional conversation, the speed that I speak picks up, the tone that I speak intensifies. Uh, I can feel myself getting stressed. You can feel that stress being reciprocated by whoever it is that you're speaking to. But the idea of being able to slow down in a moment like that and control yourself with the intention of actually understanding what another person is trying to say, I find in those moments the most difficult challenge because at the best of times, you can go in and go, all right, I'm going to seek to understand what this person's saying. And that's when you're fully calm, you're fully relaxed. And then you chuck a curveball in and you're insulted, you're disagreed with, and you're still trying to see where they're coming from. It's very difficult. Like it's a, it seems like an emotional skill that you have to be able to navigate in yourself as much as a skill that you actually have to be able to express throughout that conversation. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's break that down into kind of two parts. And, and one is uh, seek to understand, and the other is how do you keep yourself under control? Seeking to understand is inadequate. It's essential and it's inadequate. The real difference with tactical empathy is I'm trying to get you to a point where you feel I understand. When you feel heard, when you feel understood. Now, me actually understanding is only half of that equation. I have to say what it is I think you feel, what I think you heard. And most people will say, uh, understand them so you can tailor your argument. That's really what people think most. Seek to understand first, then be understood, which is understand where they're coming from so you can get your point across. And there's this chasm in between those two issues of did you demonstrate understanding? How did you? It's not saying I understand. It's saying things like, I know you probably figure I'm here just to take your money. Or it seems like you think I might be wasting your time. Or it seems like I'm not paying attention to the things that you say. Those, that's the gap in between. It makes all the difference in the world. Those are, those are actually specific skills that we teach. It seems like is a verbal observation we call it life. It's about demonstrating understanding tentatively so that you could be corrected so you don't have to be 100 percent accurate you're just you're just trying to establish two-way communication by showing what i've received first by laying it back out so demonstrating understanding is is the next step after you understand and it's the interim step that makes all the difference in a war just letting the person know that you're at least attempting to hear where it is they're coming from or what they're trying to say right and they're not going to know if you don't say out loud what you think you heard, because it's going to remain a mystery in their head. And you didn't check for accuracy. Bob Manukin wrote this great book. Bob was the head of the program on negotiation. Uh, he was kind enough to appear in the documentary film about my company, Tactical Empathy. His book, Beyond Winning, second chapter, The Tension Between Empathy and Assertiveness. And he called it the empathy loop. It's still the best chapter on empathy I've ever read, better than anything that I wrote on empathy. And what it is, is there's a loop. Listen, feedback, what you think you heard, let them correct you. Listen, feed it back. Do a loop until you get it right. How do you know you got it right? The other side says, that's right. Not your right. That's right. Those two things are 180 degree difference in meaning. 